I never thought that I would have to sit here and have this conversation to say that I tested positive for COVID-19. In order to preface, yes, this is a very serious thing. This is not meant to be a jokey matter. That's, I'm not gonna get on my soapbox and I'm not gonna say X, Y, and Z. Just wash your hands, wear your masks properly. They go over the nose. I wanna give you guys what I went through just because I panicked. <laughs> and if I can be of anything as a resource or just a voice to calm you off the ledge, <laughs> like let me be that for you because I wish I had somebody to talk me through their experiences. The timeline's gonna be a little wonky and I'm gonna try to explain it as best as I can while also still trying to piece it together for myself. Today is November 25th, so a day before Thanksgiving. We're gonna go back to Halloween to really put into perspective the timeline. I don't know if this is actually COVID related. When you piece it all together, it might actually be a crucial part of the puzzle. Let's begin. We have a little get together at my friend's house for Halloween. There's six of us at the house. And my one friend was feeling under the weather, but I think she just thought it was a cold. Saturday night, Halloween night, we have this get together. We're all drinking, we're having a great time. Sunday I wake up and I feel very hungover. Of course, to be expected, I drink a lot that night. So we spend the whole day laying around on the couch. I come home that night about seven o'clock-ish and I just feel very run down. Monday, which at this point would be November 2nd, I wake up, get ready to log on to my computer for work and I just feel really drained. I feel really tired. I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit of a sore throat, a little bit of sinus problems, which to be expected because at this point it had been cold and snowy over the weekend, but then by Monday, Tuesday, it was like 70 degrees outside. The weather was totally fluctuating, which always plays into a factor when it comes to seasonal colds. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I just feel really run down, tired, I have a cough. I don't think twice about it because I don't get sick often and when I do get sick, it's kind of one where I'm down and out. I don't think twice about it. I, you know, go about my merry way. Thursday, I was feeling fine. I would say like on a scale of one to 10, 10 being perfect health, I was probably at a seven. In the course of the week, I had been talking to this guy and he asked me on a date Saturday night. So Saturday night we go out to dinner, we end up hanging out, everything was fine and dandy. Sunday went out, did my thing. Monday, Tuesday, everything's good. Wednesday I go down to my friend's house to house sit and watch her dog and again same thing, feeling totally fine. I still have the remnants of a cold but it's not anything that would knock me out. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday my friend comes back home. I'm totally fine, everything's good. Saturday I am at my house doing laundry and I had to run out because we were doing a Friendsgiving at my friend's house. Before I ran to the store I stopped at McDonald's because all I wanted was a bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddle and a cup of coffee. Before I go to the grocery store, I'm in the car eating the McGriddle and I recall sitting there eating it and I took a sip of the coffee and I thought the coffee tasted weird. For the record, I usually drink my coffees from McDonald's with five cream, three sugars, and it was a medium. So you would be able to taste a sweetness, but it didn't, it didn't taste right. I remember audibly saying by myself in the car, this doesn't taste normal. That should have been the first indicator. But I also think I was just so hungry that I inhaled it and I don't recall tasting it. I go to the store with my mask, get all that I need to get for Friendsgiving and my grandmother was making dinner and she was making garlic potatoes. I happened to go into the living room and there was a bowl of mini M&Ms on the table. I go to grab a handful of them, put them in my mouth, and I didn't remember eating them. Like, I don't remember tasting them at this point. I'm sitting on the couch. My dad's in the living room with me as well. And he goes, oh my God, those garlic potatoes smell so good. <laughs> at this point, I realized I can't smell anything. When he was like, oh, those smell so good and I couldn't smell them, I said it out loud that I was like, oh, that's weird, I can't smell it. My dad looked at me and he was like, uh-oh. Uh oh. But again, I did not think twice about it. Now with candied yams, obviously there's sugar and syrup and honey and cinnamon, things that have notable smells. And as I'm making it, I realize I can't smell anything. At that point, I was like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. So I run into my bathroom and I'm trying not to panic because I don't want to freak myself out. But mind you, 
I had to leave to go to Friendsgiving in about 20 minutes. I think to myself, okay, like look in my closet and see if there's anything that I can smell. Obviously I stockpile candles. So I was like, well, let me grab a candle that I know the smell of. And I had one from Bath and Body Works and it was pink gumdrop, I think. It has a very strong smell. You like take the lid off the candle and it hits you. It's just that potent. Grab the candle, I open it up and I have my nose shoved into the candle and I can't smell a thing. <laughs> so I come out and I'm like, I can't smell anything. Like I'm freaking out. And my dad immediately said, everybody on lockdown, backtrack. Because I realized that I gave you the wrong dates and now the timeline is completely fudged up. The day I first started showing symptoms was November 14th. 14th, it was not the 15th. 2020, I don't know what day it is. When I took my temperature, it was 100. Now I'm freaking out, I'm stressed out, I'm worried. I'm thinking that's what it is. I'm not thinking that it's a fever because I felt scale of one to 10, I felt like a nine. I take some Tylenol just because maybe I am spiking a fever and I just don't realize it. My parents bring me dinner, I can't taste any of it. My dad was like, well, we're gonna make you a concoction and you're gonna tell me if you can taste it. So I'm like, all right. He comes to my door, knocks on my door and he has a mug in his hand and he's got his face covered and he goes, just try it. I'm like, well, what is it? And he goes, just try it. Come to find out he had made me a cup of tea with lemon and garlic in it. I took three sips of it and I couldn't taste anything. I had a bottle of Diet Dr. Pepper that I had brought with me from when I went grocery shopping earlier in the day. I couldn't taste it. I could feel the bubbles and the carbonation, but I could not taste anything. Saturday night, I stay home. I obviously don't go to Friendsgiving because in my head at this point, we don't know if it actually is COVID or not, but I'm not taking any chances. So I tell my friends, I'm really sorry, I can't, you know, yada yada. So instead we FaceTime that night, Sunday comes around, I still can't taste anything. I still can't smell anything. And at no point did I ever spike a fever. My temperature was high on Sunday, but it wasn't anything higher than like a 99. Monday, still the same. Tuesday, still the same. Wednesday, or was it Tuesday? Huh, what day was it? I'm gonna say Wednesday for the sake of the argument because I don't really remember. At this point, I'm still eating everything that they bring to me outside the bedroom door, but I'm still not tasting everything. Wednesday, my grandmother makes one of my all-time favorite comfort meals, which is noodles, tomatoes, and chopped meat. Basically, it's just ground beef, noodles, tomatoes, and onions. Anyway, I take a bite of tomato. Tomatoes have a very distinct taste to them. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, I can taste something. This is the first time in five days that I'm able to taste something. And that is also onions, and I took a bite of a cooked onion and I could taste what I thought was the onion. I want to preface this that yes, I have been in my room for the last 11 days, but I have been able to go in and out of my bedroom into the kitchen and whatnot, but when I do, I wear a mask and I sanitize everything I touch. Like, I don't leave the bedroom without Clorox wipes. I asked my grandmother to cut a part of a raw onion. Onions, especially raw onions, they fight back. And I could feel that same thing that if I were totally healthy, I could feel that same sensation. I feel like that Wednesday night, my sense of taste was at like a 25%. Smell, still completely zero. With my sense of smell, I could still breathe normally. Everything was still normal when it came to my breathing. I wasn't coughing. I wasn't sniffly other than just like it being cold outside and it just being chilled in the house, but I never had issues when it came to breathing. At this point, we're talking Thursday, we would say 25 for taste. When I say, I'm just gonna say numbers at this point, no, I'm talking percentage. So then for each day that went by, I feel like that I was slightly increasing. So we'll say by Saturday, my taste was at maybe 30 to 40 while my smell was maybe at 15. At this point, this is the first full week of symptoms that I'm showing. By the end of the first week, I would say that my smell was at maybe 50% and my taste was at like 60%. My taste was getting significantly better as my smell was lingering behind. So day 11 of my 14 day quarantine, my taste is at full 100 and my smell, I would put confidently at 85 to 90%. Sorry to the gentlemen that's that are watching this video because I just wanna keep it 100. So not only did I have the loss of smell and taste, I did also have diarrhea. That is not a red flag for when something is wrong with my body. The week that I was first in quarantine, the week, so the, the, the week after Saturday when I had the first symptoms was also my period week. And that usually is a side effect when it comes to my period. So 
in that sense, I don't want to say that diarrhea was a symptom of COVID. It very well could have been. It wasn't the red flag that Mamie said, oh crap, I need to get tested. No pun intended. The second part I want to discuss is the testing method. Saturday night, it, by the time that I realized what the heck was going on, it was too late for me to go and get a test anywhere. In the town that I work in, they have a New York State, like, testing center. You need an appointment to go to it. I don't think you can really just show up. You can, but like they don't encourage you just to show up. I knew that I wanted to go and get tested there because with my job, it was completely free. We were encouraged to go to this specific site. With it being Sunday, they're closed. So I wanted to go to a rapid testing site, but my boss totally discouraged me from doing that just because we have been told that they are not that reliable. I couldn't go to any testing site on Sunday because they were all booked up. So I had scheduled an online assessment with New York State. They called me Sunday. Monday, I was able to go and get tested. November 16th was I was able to go and get tested at the state-run facility. The 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, the 22nd was when I got my test results back where they came back positive. In New York State and specifically in my county, the quarantine rules don't make any sense to me because I have heard so many varying discussions when it comes to what is the quarantine rule. This is why I want to be completely transparent because I still don't know what the rule is. I've heard that quarantine is supposed to start the day that you show symptoms and two weeks after you show your first sign of symptoms. I've heard that quarantine starts from when you get your test. I've heard that quarantine starts when you get your test results. And I've heard that the quarantine doesn't legitimately start until you hear from the county. Because my county is testing so many people, they are extremely backlogged when it comes to their quarantine, you know, who they're calling, who they're not calling. And as I understand that the case numbers are going up because we're testing more people, we're still, I still had to wait six days from when I first started showing symptoms in order just to even get results back. So by that logic, I should be finished with my two week quarantine, the recommended amount from the CDC by this Saturday, which would be the 28th. Today is Wednesday, the 25th. Physically, I have felt totally fine through the whole thing. Mentally, which I think is honestly the scariest part of COVID. This is something that I'm going to be very open and transparent about. Mentally, this completely rocked my world. 2020 mentally to me has been one of the most challenging years, which you can tell in all of my recent videos. Mentally, we're not doing great. We're, we're not doing great up here. And sprinkle in some COVID and trying to rack your brain to figure out where the heck you got this thing, to think about who you've given it to, to think about your grandmother who lives with you, who's autoimmune compromised, to think about who I could have possibly given it to because the person that I was seeing and I went on a date with, he's in the army and he was going up to base to do training. Did I give it to him? Did he give it to me? Where did I get it from? Did I get it from my friend who's a first responder? Is she going to get it from me? Is she going to give it to the community? Your mind starts to wonder so much and you spiral so quickly. That Saturday night, if I wasn't talking to my friends on FaceTime while they were at Friendsgiving, I don't know what would have happened. I'm somebody who is very close to my family. We eat dinner together every single night and to not be able to do that was absolutely heartbreaking. Now, I don't want to say I didn't have anybody to talk to because I did. My friends, they they were rocks for me because my one friend would call me almost every night just to check in, just to make sure I was okay, that I wasn't spiraling. <laughs> My one friend, you know, she would Snapchat me every night and we would just talk about our days, literally just talk. It has, it's helped and it's made me realize who's true and who's not, which has been an, another issue of 2020 of just learning who's in your tribe and who's not in your tribe and who's important, who's not important, where I'm very thankful for the people. So to those, thank you. I'm very proud of how we took the action to shut everything down, lock me in my bedroom and very fortunate that my room allowed me the space to be able to live in it and have my own bathroom and I'm very fortunate in that sense again my symptoms were not nearly as bad as others this is where it's that finicky line of okay I lived it I experienced it I had symptoms I had all these things I still don't know how I feel about it I'm somebody from day one not to label myself as a conspiratist but didn't buy into a lot of the hype. 
I we're not part of the you know the chaos that you saw in New York City like March April or May or you know when thousands and thousands of people were dying daily and you know I am very fortunate that small scale central New York we were not affected by it we were not impacted by it as much where almost every person you knew had it. It was this whole big elusive thing where you would hear these numbers which are just completely otherworldly. You'd hear these numbers and you're like, how can that many people have it? You think of your own personal life. Now I know a lot of people. <laughs> like, I don't know how many people I know, but I know a lot of people. The life that I live outside of the internet, I knew no one who had it or whoever I did know that had it their symptoms were so small scale that you weren't hearing these catastrophic numbers or stories. After this quarantine is done, am I going to change how I look at the world today? I don't think I will. Am I scared of the virus? No. I had it. I still have it. I I'm totally fine and healthy. Do we know what the long-term effects of it are? No. And I'm sure, you know, when I'm 60 or 70, if I make it that long, like maybe complications will come out of it from then. But in current day, 27 year old Sarah on November 25th, I am not scared of the virus. When I opened that result and I saw that it was positive, I was like, all right, glad I could be a part of something so grand. My mentality towards this thing is again, I'm not taking it as a joke because it shouldn't be joked about, but that's how I handle adversity in my life. And it didn't change anything how I felt, feel, or looked at the, the pandemic or the virus prior to me getting it. That I think is the most complex part about it because you sit here and you hear these stories, but then I'm like, okay, yeah, I had it, I lived it. It still does not change a thing. I think the most frustrating part is, again, the mental toll it takes on you and just the waiting around. <laughs> like the guilt that you feel. The guilt is the worst part because when you tell somebody that you have COVID, they're like, how'd you get it? Like, where'd you get it from? And like, it's a, it's a finger pointing game. And for me, that's, it's stupid. Like, yeah, I could sit here and I can blame the guy I went on a date with. I could blame my best friend who's a first responder. I could blame the grocery store because they didn't sanitize the can of green beans I grabbed. Sure, I could, but why would I? I was very fortunate I wasn't that affected by it. I was still able to work from home. I was still able to do what I needed to do. Mentally has been rocky, but you know, I'm very fortunate to have the support group and the friend group that I do who <laughs> talk me off the ledge. It's serious, but do I think it's as serious and politicized as it needs to be? I'm just gonna leave it at that. I don't know how to close this video out. This is unlike anything that I've ever done before. Again, I'm talking about experiences that I had just because I know when I was spiraling and I was having those moments where I had immense guilt, I wish somebody would have talked to me who has had it, who has experienced it, who has had these symptoms. And if anything, I hope that this can act as an educational tool, even though it was a lot of me rambling and a lot of me just kind of getting derailed and just trying to piece together a timeline for not only myself, future me, or anybody else who has had similar experiences. I will be sure to list all my social media profiles down below too, so you can follow me wherever I might be. You can go follow the website over at sarahlock.com, two H's, two K's. Let me know in a comment if you guys have had similar experiences with COVID, your experiences with it, if it's something that, you know, if you were affected by it or if you had it, did it change your mindset? Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, love you always, stay safe, wash your hands, practice social distancing guidelines and wear your mask properly. It goes over the mask. It's supposed to cover this area. It's supposed to cover this. It's not supposed to be here. It's not supposed to be here. It's this. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and go. So thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Love you. Always stay safe. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> if I can't taste Thanksgiving, I'm going to, I'm just going to off myself right now. I feel like I just screwed up all my days. I need to look at a calendar now. Because I think I just screwed up all the dates that I was saying. Because your girl did. <laughs> Whoops. When I am out in public, I am smart. I wear my mask. I don't sanitize as often as I probably should. I have a very good immune system as it is. I know I need to be better about it. Y'all don't need to come for me in the comments, but 
I know I need to be better. I was sick the week before. So was that actually COVID or was it just a seasonal cold? I said cold really weird. Grandmother to cut me up a part of a raw onion. Uh, onion. Oh, onions. The thirst. <laughs> yeah. That happened. 